Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for being here. Uh, as we all know, in the wake of recent financial crises, the Federal Reserve has absolutely accumulated a vast amount of unprecedented power to oversee our economy. Its balance sheet alone has grown to a staggering $4.3 trillion, one-fifth of the economy, and has also grappled with an expanded array of regulatory duties. My constituents demand that the Fed account for its handling of these important issues. It's just common sense. After all, Fed policy impacts every aspect of our Main Street economy, from the price of daily essentials like gas, milk, and bread, to the cost of a home and the strength of seniors' retirement savings. The Federal Reserve must remain an independent agency that can withstand political threats to that independence. But this bill does not tell the Fed when or how to do its job. It just requires that the Fed take a transparent, measured approach to doing so. An independent Fed shouldn't equal an opaque Fed. These sensible reforms could bring the accountability to the Federal Reserve that the American people demand, and I thank the committee for taking up this legislation. I want to focus in my question time to uh, start with this uh, stress test provision in the bill. Stress tests can be a very important uh, way to show that large financial institutions can, in fact, withstand an economic downturn. This reduces the likelihood of future bailouts because they encourage companies to follow safe and sound business practices. They also convince our nation's policymakers that the proverbial sky will not fall during an economic downturn. However, I'm also deeply concerned about the highly secretive and unpredictable nature of the stress testing process. The Fed doesn't have to follow the notice and comment process, too often focuses on unpredictable qualitative factors and doesn't provide banks with a detailed accounting of the stress test methodology. In practice, banks respond by constraining their lending, which hinders the economic recovery that my constituents desperately need. This legislation addresses those concerns. Uh, some, such as our distinguished panelist, Dr. Johnson, worry that this legislation undermines the efficacy of the stress tests. He believes it will make it easier for other companies to tailor their balance sheets to Fed methodologies, gaming the system. I wonder, uh, can the remaining panelists explain why companies won't improperly game the system? For example, if the Fed believes in its stress test model and that passing, passing banks are safe and sound, why shouldn't there be transparency? I'd ask the other three if you have a, a response. I think the reforms improve the ability of the stress test to, uh, to work. Uh, I do think that it needs to be supplemented with these leverage ratios or uh, with a combination of the risk-weighted uh, capital requirements. And in fact, the more I, I think about these issues as is you're raising, too big to fail, a resolution, Title II of Dodd-Frank, Chapter 14, the, the more I realize that a simpler way would be just get these capital requirements at a, at a more satisfactory level. Uh, you know, so let me parse out where, I, where I, I think I very much agree with the question and then maybe where I have some concerns. And so where I very much agree is um, our system is very pro-cyclical, in my opinion. I think we let booms get out of control, and I think during the bust we clamp down too hard. Uh, and end up, you know, I think our current regulatory system ends up being, again, exasperating the swings. That needs to be addressed. Um, I don't necessarily think the biggest problem in that is the stress test. As I mentioned earlier, I'm very skeptical of the stress test. I would abandon them altogether, quite frankly. Uh, I don't think they're very informative, in my opinion. And again, I don't actually think they're very stressful. So that point is, again, I would just drop the stress test altogether and focus on simpler, more transparent ratios like the leverage ratio. Ms. Purse, quick thought. You could enhance the credibility of the stress test by making them more um, open so people knew what the models were, what the assumptions were, and then people could um, comment on whether they thought those were strong enough or not. I mean, we saw in Europe that people didn't believe the stress tests were very credible there, and, and so you could have stronger ones. But I also worry that you're having, that the, the banks are spending so much time worrying about what assumptions, what data the Fed is using in its models, that they're not worrying about the real business realities that they're facing as a bank. And if, if we don't believe that bankers can manage their own banks without the Fed walking them through it, I think we're in a really bad place. Um, and that's, that's a very, pr we can't rely on regulators to run our Let banks. Me, I just have about 30 seconds left. I uh, want to talk quickly about uh, uh, cost benefit analysis on all regulation that I believe is necessary. Wonder, uh, Dr. Taylor, if, uh, does the Fed's independence require that the Fed be exempt from a review of its rules by the courts? Does Fed independence in setting monetary policy means that the Fed's financial regulations are above the law? I think cost benefit analysis applied to the regulatory 
doesn't sacrifice the Fed's independence. Other agencies do that. I think it makes sense. Thank you very much. My time has expired. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Time of the gentleman.